everyone. Hello. <laughs> and welcome back to our Shaolin Talks. So um, today, me and Janine are here with you again, having a chat. Yeah. As we do. <laughs> so um, we decided to make our chat today um, a little bit significant about what's been happening um, out there in the world. Um, we understand uh, a lot of people are now locked down. Some some parts of the country are out of out of lockdown, but some of us have gone back into lockdown for the second time. Yeah. And we understand for a lot of people, it's very difficult um, for a lot of people's social and the social and cultural restrictions has had a massive impact on people's health, especially their mental health and physical health and yeah. well-being. I think we just wanted to reflect a bit yeah. as well. <laughs> I mean, obviously we've had like, what, six months lockdown the first yeah. time around. Mm -hmm. This one now seems to be easy, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think we just wanted to take some time to see um, what happened to our um, to our own health and well-being, like mentally, mm. physically. Mm. Uh, what did we do, and what worked for us, and what didn't work for us? Because I'm pretty sure, Martinez, you and me, <laughs> we. We always look quite happy, <laughs> exactly. but I'm sure we also had our struggles, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For sure, definitely. I think it's been, I think for the first time, when the first time it happened, the mm. lockdown happened the first time, I think, I don't know about you guys out there, it was really challenging, but mm. because it, you weren't really sure what was happening. It yeah. was kind of like, oh, this is a bit different, you know, and uh, there are different challenges to face, but now it's come around a second time, you kind of know what's what's going to happen and obviously you realize the implications of what the first one did to did to our our health and you know yeah. and um and and now i think i struggle a little bit more now um than the first time round. so i think we're gonna have a little chat to you about how we coped with it yeah and also maybe give you some advice on if you guys out there are struggling yourselves or um, you're a certain personality type and we're just going to kind of explore those areas because I think it's really good if you can understand um, when you're flipping out of balance how how you can recognize that in yourself um, and how and um, how best to kind of look at that and what changes you can make to help yeah yeah okay <laughs> so maybe maybe we can start with some examples so do we um Maybe, maybe we just say, like, do we know about, like, you and me, any examples that um, we struggled with or, um, yeah, that that's during we the, had to cope with? During yeah. the lockdown. And that might kind of come up again. Yeah. I, I, know, <coughs> I know during this lockdown I found it quite difficult because I couldn't see uh, my family. Mm. And I couldn't see my friends. I mean, yeah. I was quite lucky in that I could still go to work and I could still be, yeah. be around um, people who were really like-minded, which was really amazing. But um, I, did, I did struggle in, that, um, uh, in, that, in those areas. And I think as a person, generally, I tend to have quite an overactive yeah. mind. <laughs> so I do, need, um, I do need to focus my, my energies quite a lot. So having that time as well was quite strange for me. And uh, having the time to, uh, you know, not filled with lots of activity, which is what I'm used yeah. to doing, lots of physical activity, was really, really challenging. So what, what so, did, you, did you just right. one day discover, oh, it's like I need to do something about it or just did it yeah. come into place naturally or how, how I think, did it come along? I think the first thing I think the first thing I needed to establish was I need to have a routine yeah. because I think you just wake up and you're like, oh my God, I've got all this t this time or uh, or I've got I need to do certain things. So I just needed to make sure that I established a really good routine mm -hmm. um, and that I had set myself some really good tasks, like mental tasks. Yeah. Um, so I threw myself into learning some subjects that I always wanted to learn, never had the opportunity to learn, mm -hmm. and just kind of threw myself into the learning side of things. Um, kind of accepted that things were slowing down, which is not really great for me. I'm not very good when things start to slow down. So yeah, kind of slowing down, um, changing my mindset a little bit. Um, and I remember having a chat with some close people and you know encouraging me saying okay you know it's okay actually yeah. you can you can get through this and you know you, you need to accept yeah. what's happening and yeah. yeah 
I had like um, to that. Yeah, similar, similar. Um, I obviously also I still was working and it was quite busy actually at the time. <laughs> and it's also I think what I found as well again slow usually slowing down for me is not really a problem. <laughs> but, <laughs> Um, but it, it needs to be done a bit differently. So what I found for myself as well mm. is, and that's what I also try to keep on doing, um, that like at least once a week or so, um, I kind of want this off-screen time. Oh right. You know, okay. it's like because even if you work in front of the computer all day mm. and you, you don't do much, it, it's like it's this constant. I don't know, this constant on the screen and yeah, it's like of um, inf also information overload a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I kind of give myself a bit like, oh, I, I try to do it a day, but it, it's not always working. So, but um, I found also it's kind of if you go outside and so on and you're off the screen, basically off, mm -hmm. take, take that away and you're a bit more get a bit more relaxed as well. You get more energy. I yeah, think yeah. sometimes when you're staring at a screen all day, yeah. and in, in, in the Chinese medicine terms, when, you, when you're staring constantly, mm. it actually drains your blood, it drains your liver yeah. tube, this is all they say. So constant staring what, all the sometimes time. Sometimes I feel really tired, tired. as well, yeah. 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 So you, it's good to take like short breaks off mm. the computer anyway, if you're yeah. having, to, having to do that yeah. stuff, yeah. So yeah, yeah that, that really helps. Yeah. So. <laughs> I did, a, I practiced some different meditations that I, that, um, that I hadn't got round to doing and Qigong. I think for me, I've got like various different coping mechanisms. Mm. So I've got like a list of them. <laughs> So, like, so it's like physical. The first thing I always turn to is physical. So if I'm feeling like frustrated or, um, you know, or uh, imbalanced in any way, the first thing I turn to is physical. So what, like, like running, working out, running. running or getting outside or outside <coughs> in fresh air. Um, the next step, if that doesn't work and I come back and it's still there, then I'm like, okay, right, okay, maybe try something more, a little bit more meditative, some relaxation, yeah. qigong, healthy food. And then if that fails, <laughs> then I turn <laughs> to fluffy animals. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. Because the animals, they don't know anything about it, do they? Yeah. So I get on my phone, I'm like, okay, what's the cutest animal I can find <laughs> to kind of calm me down a little bit, open yeah. up your heart a little bit and relax, yeah. you know? And then yeah. other than that, so things like physical stuff, like massage is really good. So like self-massage mm. or go have a massage or a really hot bath would just help me to just chill out and, and relax a little bit yeah. and try and stop my brain from going 100 <laughs> miles an hour, like brrrr. <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, for me, it's a bit similar as well. I think if it's too much in your head, the first thing is also kind of get outside, isn't it? Just yeah. kind of get some fresh air into yeah. your mind or like, yeah, what do you say? Uh, clear the cobwebs. Clear the cobwebs out. <laughs> um, it's, so, really, yeah. it's really good if for like, um, because, you know, there's like, um, there's like kind of like five main personality types. So the personality type where you feel quite frustrated um, during this lockdown, mm. you know, and you feel you can't, con you just feel very irritated by what's going on. And you'll yeah. know that sort of, per if you are that sort of person, you'll know who you are because when you go out of <coughs> balance, you'll feel these emotions coming mm. up. Um, you, you might feel a little bit out of control or you might feel like you, you can't control the situation and that makes you feel very tense inside. So is this like snapping at people? Yeah, or just irritating. Like... It, it can go two ways, I think. One way it can go like outwardly, mm. but then I think because people don't, and the, the, in society it's kind of not very, it's not seen, it's not accepted to mm. do that outwardly. So what happens is the energy then goes inside and then you start to feel like that about yourself. So you start to feel like you can't relax or you feel guilty that you're not doing things that you should be doing. And you're not working hard enough or you're not performing hard enough. And so if, if that starts to become an imbalance in your body, then the things that you can do is start uh, you can start to go out into nature. So that's for that type of that's personality. That's that type of person. If you go out into nature, <coughs> mm. you get connection with the natural environment. Mm. Anything natural is going to help you to calm yourself down, help to calm your mind down. So removing yourself from the situation and getting out, um, either running, moving your chi, moving your energy, if it's all stagnated and you feel frustrated, moving your energy mm. and chi is a really good, good way um, to help relieve that. Um, also, if it's going inward, 
so the frustration yeah. is going in on yourself, um, then you can practice exercises like being kind to yourself, forgiving yourself. Yeah, yeah I've heard this about, kind of stuff. I've heard yeah. about things like this. Um, I think a lot of people have seen this around. A lot of people practicing these grateful. Uh, exercises yeah, being grateful really good, for yeah. things so yeah. I think for some people or I think in general that works being grateful for the things you have yeah um, but I've seen lately that a lot of people practice this um, yeah. around yeah and yeah sometimes it just can help you also to s see where you are in a situation and that yeah. maybe sometimes people have it worse than you mm. and you're, you're you're probably not as bad off <laughs> as yeah. you might think. Yeah. So, yeah. You kind of like appreciate, appreciating what you have in yeah. a way. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And another thing is, it's like, because you mentioned three things earlier, isn't it? You said like mm. out in nature, otherwise you do meditation. Um, mm. I think sometimes what I also do is, well, I'm, I'm a book, big reader anyway, so I like oh, to okay. read. So I'll probably escape into novels and fairy tales. Escapism. You can escape. Uh, so yeah, that, that, that really helps me. So I, I, I do like to escape into, yeah. I don't know, La La Land. Yeah. I <laughs> yeah. escape into studying. Yeah. I go into like, I, I love to study and learning, and learning new things all the time and learning, I love learning lists. It's really fabulous <laughs> learning. I love learning lists of things. It's a bit OCD, isn't it? It's a bit OCD. So what, do you have them all on your fridge lined up? And yeah, then... yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I do. Yeah, literally. Because at the moment, yeah. I'm studying the herbal, Chinese herbal medicine. So yeah. it's a lot of list learning. So for me, it's like, oh, it feels so good <laughs> to learn Is that because you can tick it off? Or... Yeah, you just have like lists. I remember doing it when I was younger. I used to have, um... oh, God, this is quite embarrassing. <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this. When I was younger, we used to, I used to be into American football and I used to love all the American football teams and just like seeing their helmet and then listing out all of the countries <laughs> what, what that they were from. Really? Yeah, well, really did, you know, did you know all the players by yeah. heart? Really? All the players, yeah. All the players, all their helmets, where they were from in the world. So you can literally show me a helmet of somewhere like Dallas Cowboys or Houston Oilers. Aww. It's still in there, you know? <laughs> it's really sad. I was an only child. Well, for a little while anyway. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is, yeah. I mean, that uh, you have lots of different coping mechanisms. But another <coughs> another type of person that might um, that you come across is somebody who's worrying all of the time. You know, like yeah. uh, they're worrying constantly. They're overthinking. So obviously, when you're studying all the time as well in Chinese medicine, it affects your stomach and spleen. That's mm. why a lot of people who are studying a lot, they get a lot of. Um, um, problems uh, with their digestion. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. So also, when you're over worrying and when you're overthinking all of the time, you can have the same effect effect on oh, your right. stomach and spleen, and this can affect the sort of person. So, these are the sort of people that maybe you're really worried about lockdown and it's constantly playing on your head and you can't sleep at night and the thoughts are just coming mm -hmm. over and over again, and and maybe these sorts of people. A sort of people that would really like to support other people all of the time. Mm -hmm. They're always looking out for other people, but actually, deep down, it's very difficult for them to support themselves and to so, ask for help for themselves. So, does it actually help them if they? Um, I, w I would guess that those people in in these difficult times, that these people are actually out there and helping other people. Yeah, right? they might be doctors so, and nurses. Or I don't and, know, yeah. it's like helping with food banks or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, but then it's like they also need to kind of help themselves, yeah, right? Yeah. So they need to yeah. kind of see how that they that they don't suffer while giving everything to to someone else. That's yeah? right. They gotta. There's some really great exercises that you can do um, if you are that sort of person. So you could, uh, for example, you need to realize that your body and yourself, you need to be healthy in yourself if you want to look after other people. You know, mm. It's amazing. Look after your family. Probably your family is one of the most important things to you in your life. Um, but you can't look after your family if you can't look after yourself. So things like nourishing yourself with really good food. Um, so if you come across someone like this, like yeah. if you have a friend like this, because yeah. it also sounds a bit like those people usually get... Um, overlooked 
Yeah, is it like okay. it's, it's because it's yeah. like they're helping they're others caring and, all the time yeah. and they get overlooked that they actually need help as well yeah. so they got so, to reach out they have to yeah. reach out so they have them. to reach out they have to personally reach out mm. and do activities that are really good to help mm. themselves mm. support themselves and that might be nourishing themselves through food it might be taking time out to have a really nice film for themselves or or, or go out and do something for themselves maybe have okay. a massage you know do so, something but if you if 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 you were a friend like mm. or if you were that person and i were your friend <laughs> <laughs> i would just go like martine you need to eat <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like no yeah. i can't be bothered i don't want it or no. here let's have some food yeah, no. <laughs> or let's do probably, this probably the best way would be is it would be is if you have a friend like that you'd yeah. say Oh, you know, if you really want to help me, maybe you can. We can go out for something to eat together. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you okay. can support me by helping yourself. Yeah, it's always yeah. really challenging if you're that that kind of person. It's really mm. difficult to actually make the step to go out because they're yeah. always seen as like the rock. Mm. You know, they're always looking after everybody else, but they never really think about that for themselves. So, if you are that sort of person, then. It's the same thing, you can go out in nature, you can go and feel, sometimes they feel very ungrounded mm -hmm. because the stomach makes you feel, uh, you know, makes you ground yourself. Yeah. And sometimes they don't want to be inside their body, so they might like do escapism and into books mm. and, and spiritual things, but it's quite good for them to get into their body and exercise and ground yeah. themselves. So kind of walking and grounding and doing like exercises like Tai Chi and physical, physical stuff is yeah, really, okay. really good for them. And obviously making really nourishing food mm. is really good as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got another one, uh, my third thing, yeah. What I also like is because it's one of my passions. So it's okay. um, just be creative, isn't it? It's so oh, yeah, yeah, it really yeah. helps me as well if I um, if I can create something or if I can draw something or yeah, mm. do something um, with your hands, pretty much. Yeah. Right? So during lockdown, I've created this book. <laughs> What's that then? <laughs> so I've done this myself, oh, right? I had like a, I had like the paper and everything, and you kind of. Oh, you actually made yeah, the book. Yeah, I made this book. <laughs> what? What? How did you do yeah. that? Well, I had like a kit, and they told you how to make it, but oh you had to God. kind of, you had to sew the, you had to sew the papers oh my God, together, that's amazing. and you, you had to, this. and you had to glue them together, and then you had to oh wait. Oh my God, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Oh so, my God. And then obviously it helps me to put some stuff inside. <laughs> yeah, no, that's so cool. Wow, that's really so, amazing. So I thought I'd share this with you guys, that I made yeah. something. <laughs> well, I think it's really um, important, yeah, to do things that create. No, but um, yeah, again, that is something that probably also is kind of um, takes your mind of other things. Mm. And at the end also is quite rewarding because you get something where you go like, I've made this. This is really cool. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. Um, and you can show other people, or you can just have it for yourself and be happy. Oh, that's so um, nice. Yeah. yeah. You can give it so, like a gift to somebody as well. That would be yeah. quite nice to give gifts away and things, isn't it? I did. Um, I just thought of something else as well for people, you know, these people who are worrying all the time and supporting. I remember over lockdown, I, I did some gardening. Yeah. I tried to grow some stuff. I don't know whether you remember some of the... Some of the yeah talks that we we talked about previously gardening and things but that's really good for this type of earth type person is if they're finding it difficult to ground themselves you can you can do some gardening as well and get into sort of the nature and the plants and things to yeah, help I think I, I know some people who did some who, who, grow, who grew their own tomatoes and so on and then mm. in the end they had I think they started obviously March April to do this yeah. And then in September, by September, August, September, they had so many, they didn't know what to do with them. You know? <laughs> Give them away um, to everybody. Yeah, so lots of tomato soup for them. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. There's also, um, uh, there's also um, people out there that you might be feeling quite scared with what's yeah. happening you know that there's i know there's quite a lot of people who feel a quite a lot of fear about the future mm. um and these people just uh, it's a different to the the worrying type this one they feel like deep down quite a lot of fear for what's going to happen it's very difficult to reassure them of what's so going do on they, um, the ones that worry and the ones that are scared mm. how how does that 
uh, physically show or how mm. does this yeah. um, be so visible? If, you, if you're if you frightened and you feel fear, <coughs> I don't know whether you feel fear, I feel fear. <laughs> just in the last um, Kung Fu workshop that we just <laughs> did where I've been chucked about all over the place, I feel quite a lot of fear then. I don't know whether, yeah. if you feel fear, and like naturally you feel fear, you feel like you feel it in your lower back. Oh. Yeah, you feel lower back and um, sometimes if you look at the, you look into nature about what that is. So the element of fear um, relates to water. Mm. So if you look at water, it's kind of, it can be quite powerful. It can be yeah. overpowering. Yeah. It can be frozen. It can freeze you. So sometimes the element reflects the actual nature of the emotion All as right. well. So but physically in your body, you will feel, you can feel frozen. You can feel stuck. Mm -hmm. um, you might feel it in your lower back. You might feel a lot of lower back ache or kind of, um, weakness in your bones in your knees mm. um, and generally it's it's the willpower as well mm. so you feel like you you're, you feel hopeless mm. actually these people are quite driven in what they do in their work usually when they're when they're balanced they feel very driven in what they're doing and they're very uh, outwardly they seem very um, confident so um, when they when they've been um, when they've been thrown out of balance yeah then the fear then kicks in, the fear kicks in the for them yeah. yeah okay and sometimes they might feel <coughs> certain phobias or or yeah so this this fear this underlying fear can then overtake their whole life yeah so if that if that's the case and then you need to find ways in which to reassure yourself and um, find ways in which to calm your calm your energy down mm. and really relax and, and calm calm yourself down because this this energy this fear is kind of quite all-consuming yeah, you know yeah. um, and it comes from a different place from like the heart for example so if you're like a very anxious person it comes from the heart is more of a nervousness more mm. of a, um, a restlessness and agitation that that needs to be addressed in a kind of a different way, mm. yeah, in a different way, and and also for the heart type person, it's um, this time is actually quite challenging, yeah, because you imagine you're locked away, you're not allowed to see your friends. So they um, they yeah. they um, people like this. Uh, I mean, what really helped me as well is obviously seeing people. Sometimes do see people and mm. kind of get out, not being. <laughs> Uh, on your own yeah. and um, it's always good to kind of have at least some kind of people or even if you just have a phone call or a, mm. I don't yeah. know video chat mm. or whatever mm. so just keep in the contact with your friends yeah. and family I think that's really Isn't important it? yeah and yeah. also some people will be really struggling during this time they will they won't know what to do they'll feel mm. isolated they'll feel stuck um, and if they're feeling down, these sort of people, they will want to remove themselves from other people because being around people, they make other people happy. Yeah. yeah. And when they don't feel happy, they don't want to be around other people. So then they isolate themselves. Yeah. And that's probably the worst thing that you could do is isolate yourself, put yourself on your own. You know, you need to get out there and talk, try and talk. Talking therapies are really great because when you talk, you move the energy of your heart, mm. you know, it, it directly linked link to your heart. So being able to communicate how you feel um, and express how you feel is really important for these types of people. Yeah. yeah. Even if you just pick up the phone and you, if you've got no one to talk to, there are like groups out there like Samaritans and you know, you don't need to feel embarrassed or um, cut yeah. off. You can just go and you can just go and talk to anybody. Don't feel like you lock yourself away, mm. you know, don't talk to anyone. I think also it's like um, talking about, um, well, let's um, help that's out there, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of probably uh, established during the first lockdown. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of groups that established help. So, like people that do, uh, because I know people um, that kind of uh, started food banks mm -hmm. and help people that are, don't have enough money to and that yeah go hungry mm. or other people that yeah do like these telephone services where you can ring them and just mm. chat to someone and so on mm. so i think that that's also quite a good thing if you what well, if you don't know what to do with yourself or yeah, if you don't struggling. know if you're struggling or if you want to i don't know do do just something something for someone else 
mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Sometimes so. if people are also another type of person that feels quite overwhelmed. They, they might not be showing it on the outside, so mm. they might seem quite cut, cut off, but actually they're very sensitive, you know, feeling everything yeah. around them. Um, and I think sometimes you just need to uh, this sort of person also a very hard working and can be quite hard on themselves so if you think you know you're feeling quite finding it quite difficult and you're you're giving yourself a hard time and sometimes yeah. you've got to be a bit more easier on yourself not so yeah. self-critical and just be really kind to yourself yeah you know i mean what i found like personally from just from my person personal um like hobbies and passions and so on you know especially when you're a creative there's a lot of community out there that do the same thing mm. you know or where you also can um just share the same same things mm. so i think it's like when i when i started like years and years ago sometimes this can first be a bit overwhelming because you come into some kind of community and they're all creative and they all do amazing stuff you know and you, you feel a bit like oh my God, they're all so much better than me. <laughs> but it's not about this. In the end, it's like you, once you kind of find your feet, yeah. it, it can be quite um, uplifting because um, people support you in what you mm. do as well. Mm. And they, they also give you new inspiration. Mm. They, they give you some inspiration to do other things and so on. Mm. So Martin, do you um, had like a person or something that inspired you and that was really um, supportive for your well-being. I think there's there's a <coughs> lots of people in in my life that are are supporting, like of friends yeah. and family and and my kung fu family. Mm. You know, they're all you know um, my students as well. When I see mm. them, they they uplift me. And um, I think there are so many different things that we that we don't even realise that actually support us deep yeah. down inside yeah and um and it, and it might it it can be it can be people um but also it can be um things like things that you that you see like mm. messages that you see from people it can be the, even the smallest things you know i think that the way that you are you know if you are sending out good positive messages you don't realize how far those ripples go, go. Yeah, yeah. even if you're walking down the street and somebody <laughs> smiles at you mm. you know you can't you know at the moment you can't see people but you know you you don't have that contact with people but even those smallest gestures like hi how are you doing you know or like when you see people walking past you think oh wow that's that's really uplifting yeah. you know that's really um positive and you can you can do that yourself you know rather than waiting you know, for it, <laughs> waiting for it or, or holding on to things or you know struggling with the things that you can't change oh no i can't change this you know or i want to control situation i can't control yeah. it or worrying and feeling anxious or fearful or um um yeah or holding on to things you know you can just relax and kind of just let mm. go and and send out positive messages and then you can see what comes back so mm. sometimes if you send out a positive message or you are positive with somebody yeah and you can see how that comes back to you you know and then i always like this idea you know i've, ne I've never done it but it's, it's something an idea that i might do one day or not <laughs> <laughs> um it's this it's this because i'm 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 quite a big fan still of letter writing or postcard yeah. writing yeah and I have this idea of where sometimes you just write postcards to your friends and families just really randomly <laughs> yeah, and see what happens. I haven't done it, but um, maybe one day I will do it. And yeah. you, you get a secret postcard from me. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good, Janine. <laughs> get some postcards. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it's... Um I think it's it's a it is a challenging time for everybody. Mm. It's good to stay positive, mm. you know, and sometimes it's hard to be positive, especially when you're seeing all the imagery on the news all the time, you know, and uh, it, it, with the environment, you're totally bombarded all the time with negative uh, information. So we're you know whether it's politics or whether it's um, the environment, you know, we've got big environmental issues yeah. happening, um, and then we're locked in we feel trapped 
So in this time, we have to we have to stay as positive as we can do. You know, you have mm. to you have to put your mind in a really good place. You've got to use some tools. I think I think you, you might together. you might need, want to. I think it's like some for sometimes it's kind of to explore what triggers something that you feel good of or good. You know, either mm. is for some people it might be music. Certain yeah, type that, of, yeah, that's uh, for some people it might be certain cultural things or so. I mean, I saw something the other day, like from a play I seen ages ago, and uh, it just kind of put me back when I saw it first. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Mm. This is really uplifting. Mm. And sometimes I think you just need to know what can trigger this in you, yeah. because when you feel a bit going into the other direction out of balance you might can go back to this and go like okay i know this one or this type of music or this mm. this type of thing will push me back <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah definitely <coughs> i definitely have I, i know within myself personally that mm. i have coping mechanisms yeah, yeah. and then when i'm feeling really low if i feel quite sad then i, I need something to open up my heart I would yeah. definitely look on my phone and try and find fluffy animals and <laughs> things like that <laughs> to cheer me up and things like yeah yeah so I think if you I think it's good for you to to I think during these times it makes you have to make an assessment you mm. you're even though it is challenging it's it it presents you with like um a time to think about things 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 that you wouldn't normally think about um maybe things come up in your life and you're like oh actually I don't really want that in my life anymore mm. and that's made me realize a lot about things things that you really want in your <coughs> life and things that you don't want you know and and it helps you self-realize yeah. yeah actually yeah. you can use it as a time to cultivate yourself and look at it in a more positive way rather than when when will you ever ever have the chance in your life when you can say everything just stopped yeah you know everything stopped I couldn't go to work I couldn't you know I couldn't see my friends I can do this there's not very many opportunities in your life no. when that can actually happen so you can yeah. use it in a positive way and I know there's a lot of people out there as well who haven't stopped yeah you know and had to go on working and they've had to look after their children <laughs> at home whilst they're with childcare and working at the yeah. same time my god I, mean, I have a friend of mine who has same yeah many children <laughs> and she's like doing a high powered yeah. job at the same time I don't know how she does it it's crazy yeah. no no but I've, it made us stronger yeah, I bet it's yeah. made us stronger yeah I think so I think so too I mean I've yeah. got some friends like that as well where they said like yeah okay we had to kind of um during the day, teach the children, yeah. <laughs> do the homework, yeah. or take care of the other ones that <laughs> don't have homework. <laughs> and then uh, once they've, they've been done, it's like eight hours later, oh, now I have to do my own work. Yeah. <laughs> From, my, uh, friend, yeah. my friend said to me, she said, I absolutely hate it because she said all she can see on social media is people saying, oh, I'm so glad that I've, um, mm. lockdown has happened because I've <laughs> had this time to really reflect on myself and really think about the things yeah. that I need in my life. And she's <laughs> like, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> she's like, all I've got to do is like a hundred million things yeah. all in the space of like my, my living room with my, you know, many and children <laughs> running around. <laughs> she said, I'm going yeah. crazy. But yeah, um, if you're in that situation, then that's a whole different ball game, right? Then you've got yeah. to learn how to manage your time effectively <coughs> and give yourself and time out. slow down, yeah. I think well, those time ones out. need to slow down as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah, like time to relax and get your thoughts together and yeah. 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 <laughs> so I mean, it's, it's like, I think um, what you said before as well, coming back to um, now, so we obviously, we. We had a look what we've done before, what is happening now, mm. and obviously uh, in future, what what can we do? But it's also, um, yeah, it's, uh, it takes courage to change, isn't it? If you mm. want to change, yeah. So um, yeah, I also think we we need to not see it so seriously, and. Mm. Um, you just kind of go op into this with a bit like of an yeah, open mind. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I think we definitely need to um, go with the flow. I think <laughs> go with the flow is like a really good thing. If you can't change things. I was having a conversation with someone the other day and they gave me some really great advice. They said, you know, if you can't change it, even if the worst things happen in your life and you can't change it, what can you actually do? Mm. You know, what can you do? And then we kind of came to the conclusion, actually, we need to accept 
things that you can't change. I mean, there's that mm. really lovely poem, isn't there, about accepting the things that you cannot change. Yeah, who's that by? I can't, I can't <laughs> remember my home. There's like an affirmation. Um, um, but yeah, acceptance is a, is a big thing. It's, it's, it's one thing to say it, but actually to do it is, mm. is another thing, is to truly accept the situation is happening. Okay, there's nothing I can do about it. Just stay positive. Um, keep yourself, if you are, if you do have the luxury of having more time on your hands, to be, you know, uh, to ex find different activities to do, then explore different parts of yourself, then yeah, that's great, you can do that. If not, then can't change it. <laughs> Have to accept it and kind of move forward and let go, let go of the control, can't control the situation, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's difficult. So yeah. I've heard, Martin, <laughs> that you just like before before we finish, yeah. you have like one one really good tip on um, self massage. What people can do. Oh to, yes, um, that's right. Okay. It's like so we we can present you like a little gift. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's <laughs> um, really lovely. Yeah. To okay. uh, what people can do, and I, I'm sure that is that could. That class is for all types of people, right? Yeah, or every anyone. So I was thinking maybe I could show you some acupressure points. Yes. That okay. can be really good to help calm down mm -hmm. your heart, calm down your nerves. So there is a really great point. It's very easy to find. It's on your wrist. So okay. you, you, you might be able to. You might be able to find. Actually, there's two points. There's one really easy one. So usually they use this for travel sickness as well, okay, for nausea. Yeah. But it's a really good point as well to help calm down your heart. So if you hold up three fingers like this and you put it up against your wrist. Yeah. And then the point um, where the three fingers finish, you put your, thing, your thumb right in the middle of the two tendons. Yes, yeah, so if you make a fist, oh, you can oh, yeah, see two okay. tendons. Yeah, yeah. And you put your finger three finger widths up and right in the center you push into that point and you can massage it in a circle so this is pericardium six so it's really good to help calm down your heart calm down your mind it's also really good if you feel a bit sick and you feel nauseous then you can press this point and you just okay. kind of circle it around like this and then circle it around the other there's also yeah so if i show you that one there like this here so how you find it so that three finger widths and then you put your thumb in the middle. If you make a fist, you can see the two, two <laughs> tendons, yeah? I can't even it look at this. Bit, it, feels weird. it does feel quite strange when you press it, when you press these points, because they're acupressure points, they feel a bit numb or a bit yeah. kind of weird when you feel them, yeah. they feel a bit strange. But yeah, if you, pre you press down hard on it, then you can, it, it's kind of quite relaxing. Yeah, okay. There's also another one, which is really good for um, shock. And it's, it's a bit more trickier to find, but if you follow your little finger all the way down here like this, and you get to like a little bobble, like a little bone, yeah, that sticks out here. So on the inside of that bone, and oh, yeah. you just press here, this is oh, called heart seven. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, oh, oh, anywhere just along this channel here, so along the inside of your arm, if you massage all down that channel, all down that arm, that is your heart channel. I think I like this better than the yeah. other. So. <laughs> Usually, yeah, some of them are quite relaxing. So if you, mm -hmm. if, you, if you massage all down that area or onto your palm, into the middle of your palm here, into the centre of your palm, then this one can also be quite relaxing as well, heart seven. Yeah. So sometimes in the clinic, I needle this point and people literally jump off the couch. They're like, what? <laughs> because they had a big shock in their life. And um, when, you, when you needle this point, it kind of releases all the shock, all the trauma. So you can, you can massage this one. And there is also... Okay, number three. Number three. This is the last one that I do today. Because like, there's so many. There's like hundreds and hundreds of points. But um, there's another uh, point that you can do. It's actually on your ears. On my ears. Okay. Yeah, it's on yeah your I'm ears. all ears. You're so. all ears. You're all ears. So this is kind of like a little massage you do. Like if you have reflexology, you know, some people get their feet massaged because on mm. their feet, you understand all the organs yeah. are kind of like on your feet. Well, the same as like reflexology for your feet, you actually have reflex points on your ear. Okay. So all your organs are kind of reflected a bit like a macrocosm on your ear, inside your ears and around your ears. So they do this in China, actually, for the children. Okay. Yeah, so what, the children do it themselves. The children massage their ears oh, okay. in so, the classroom yeah. okay, well, to help how, with their how concentration do, how and do help we with do their health. This, 
So what you're going to do is you're going to, number one, you're just going to rub your ears up and down like this. So you take your two fingers like this and you're going to rub up and down either side of your ear. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So at the front of your ear here, if you see the front of your ear, you've got some really important acupuncture points here, yeah? Yeah. And at the back of your ear, also you have the same, same points. So you're going to rub up and down either side. So when I do it, I can't hear you. So okay. <laughs> you do like this. Yeah. Okay, then you're going to take your earlobe and then you're going to pull down like one, two, three. Yeah. Yeah, and then you're going to pluck up like one, two, three. Okay. Yeah, and then you're going to massage all the way around your ears. So you probably see my ear getting quite red now. Yeah, so all the way around like your ears from top all the way to the bottom. Yeah. They actually, you can do specific acupuncture for, um, especially for addictions okay. and for giving up smoking and things like that. You can, you can do um, ear acupuncture. It's really, really effective. Yeah. So again, so you're going to massage all the way like here and then up. So you pull down three times, like one, two, three. Yeah. And then up one, two, three. Yeah, and then one, two, three. <laughs> one, I feel already two. quite relaxed. You feel relaxed? <laughs> the points that are, the, there's a really good point that's right in, if, <clears throat> if you look at your ear, I don't know whether you can zoom in on my ear here, but um, there's actually a really good point just here. Yeah. Um, and it's actually the heart point. So sometimes you can get um, these little ear seeds. Don't know whether you've seen them or not. They're kind of like... Um, in the old days, they used to use like peppercorns mm -hmm. or like little what, mustard to stack, seed. To stack them in there? Yeah, they really? put like a little mustard seed and then they would press it onto the point and then they would tape it on. Nowadays, you've got like other things like little press magnets and you've even got like little um, mm. needles that you can put in your, near, in your ear. But one of the points here is for the heart. So you can just massage this point as well. Yeah, don't, it's don't, really good. don't put any needles in your ear. No, don't do that <laughs> unless you're a trained professional. <laughs> Or any seeds or any mustard seed or anything, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I just say what they used to do in the old days, you know. So, yeah, but you can do the same again. So you can, you can just massage the point yourself and you can, mm. you know, help you to calm yourself down. Okay, I think that's quite good tips. I think we can try those out. Just let us know as well. If you, if you try these out, if it helps you, just let us know mm. if, if it helps you or not. There are um, so many other things that you can do. There's yeah. so many other things like tapping. There's all these different tapping exercises that you can do. Um, there are many points all over your body that help to mm. can relax your um, mind. So yeah. yeah, these are just a couple. <laughs> so yeah, I think if we, if we just give, give our audience a bit of a summary of what sure. we've learned today. <laughs> Go on then. So, <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> no. Um, so, kind of my summary would be obviously we we all we all different. We all cope differently yeah. in, in times like these. So, um, as you said, there are different personality types. Yeah. That some need to go out. Some need to go inwards. Mm. Some need company. Some don't. <laughs> some. Mm -hmm. um, are creative, some are physical, some are more mentally. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's, it's kind of, as you also said, with the uh, five elements, it's like to try to find your balance. Yeah, I that's think that's really the important. most important thing mm -hmm. to, to see if you, if you can find your own balance um, within your mind, within your body, mm -hmm. um, that can help you in life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it's very true. That's very true. So, and that's balance can come in many different forms. So that's whether you're looking at various different aspects. So eating, so are you eating a balanced diet? You know, are you exercising in a balanced way? Is your work life balanced? Are you getting time out? You know, if you're working constantly all of the time, that's not balance. Yeah, are you spending every minute of the day on your computer? It's not balanced. Eventually, your body, your mind are going to suffer. So you do need to get that mm. balance. And usually, usually you can you can feel when you don't feel mm. right in yourself. If you can learn how to feel, like the meditation, qigong exercises, they're all um, a tool to help you to learn how to mm. balance yourself and to feel 
the changes within your body. If you can feel that and you know how to help yourself, then yeah. this is when it becomes a lot easier. You can manage things a lot easier for yourself. And then you feel, you feel like you're in more control of your health. Mm. You're more control of yourself. You're not having to rely on other things or medication or whatever, things like that. You know, yeah. you, can, you can take some responsibility for yourself too. And you can feel empowered by that. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree with Janine as well. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, do we have one last thing to say? <laughs> like one, maybe one last wisdom of the day? One last wisdom of the day. So, from me, I would say just try to relax. Um, uh, don't be too hard on yourself. Um, it's going to pass. These times will pass. Nothing can ever really last forever, right? Yeah. Things are always constantly changing from one thing to another. So just relax and, yeah. um, and find, find different ways to keep well, yourself find, balanced. Find your inner peace. Find your inner <laughs> peace, yeah. That's a good... <laughs> That's okay. a good way to say it, yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. So, yeah, so if you've enjoyed our talk today and um, uh, you want to leave your comments, then um, you can leave your comments online or you can write to us. Um, you can also go and have a look on our website as well. We've got a really great website if you are into sort of physical activities and you want to learn more, you want to take some courses, maybe you want to learn a little bit more about meditation or you want to learn a bit of Qigong or some physical yeah. exercises too. That you well, can I think the there's a bit of everything in there, isn't it? So you can, you can get a bit of physical, a bit of meditation, Mental. a bit of culture as yeah. well. <laughs> so just check it out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So um, thank you so much for watching and we will see you next time, next week yeah. for our Shaolin Talks. Okay, <laughs> see you, you then. Bye, guys. Thanks, bye.